Within the realm of healthcare, patients and clinicians need to answer several questions. Is there a potential to eradicate a particular disease? What is the probability of prolonging the lives of patients with the disease? What is the probability of delaying the progression of disease? And what is the frequency and impact of treatment side effects? Clinicians are well accustomed to making initial therapeutic recommendations based on the outcomes of randomized controlled trials involving large groups of patients. But a particular patient will not necessarily behave and respond the same as the masses. Enter N of 1 randomized controlled trials. The N of 1 RCT, also known as single case or single subject research, involves experimental studies of single patients. It is similar to a case crossover study. Let's take a few minutes to talk about how N of 1 RCTs work. First of all, the study begins by blinding the patient we are treating so as to minimize bias. Next, he or she will be randomized to pairs of active placebo, high dose, low dose, or first drug alternative drug combinations. The order of treatment will be in a random fashion. Then, patient's performance to the treatment is recorded according to the outcomes of interest. It should be noted that whoever is measuring these outcomes is also blinded, making the N of 1 trial a double-blind, randomized controlled study. Some criteria must be met so that an N of 1 trial can be conducted. A minimum of three treatment pairs are needed, as it is difficult to obtain a clear answer from a smaller number of pairs. The drug should have a rapid onset of action and rapid termination of action. The disease should be chronic or stable. The drug, if proven to be effective, would have to be continued for a long period of time. The patient should be eager to collaborate in designing and carrying out this trial design. And lastly, the collaboration of the pharmacy is needed. Collaboration with the pharmacy is an important step while conducting an N of 1 RCT. The pharmacy department would be responsible for preparing placebos and active medications with the same appearance, taste, and texture. Pharmacists can also be responsible for preparing the randomization schedule, which allows both the patient and the clinician to remain blind to the allocation. Additionally, pharmacists can be extremely helpful in planning the design of the trial, specifically the washout period and the duration of the trial. Lastly, they are involved in assessing patient compliance through pill counting and analyzing serum blood levels at the end of each treatment period. There are two main methods to measure the outcomes of an N of 1 RCT. The first is by using physiological endpoints. However, this has been shown to exhibit considerable intra-individual variability. The other is that of measuring the effect of drug on aspects of health-related quality of life, such as the patient's ability to walk a dog or use the stairs, in addition to psychological well-being and symptom severity. Now let's apply this information to a theoretical example. Today, the association of beta blockers and exacerbation of peripheral vascular disease remains controversial. Meta-analyses have refuted this association, yet many remain unsure about whether patients with PVD should receive beta blockers. Such an issue provides an ideal condition to conduct an N of 1 RCT, as it means all of the aforementioned criteria. PVD is a chronic condition, the effect of beta blockers on peripheral vasculature has a rapid onset and rapid termination, and the patient would be receiving the drug for a long duration. A patient involved in such an N of 1 RCT would receive a two-week treatment with a beta blocker and a two-week treatment with a placebo, with a two to four transition day period between the two involving decreasing drug doses. The patient would go on to answer a symptom questionnaire related to the disease. A considerable challenge of this disease is the implementation of safeguards in a clinical, sensible way during the investigation of drug effects, keeping both the patients and the clinicians blind to the treatment that is being tested is important to prevent the emergence of misleading conclusions such as the placebo effect, the natural history of the illness, and the desire of the clinician and or patient to avoid disappointing one another. In spite of its limitations, the N of 1 RCT remains a useful design to address issues that involve rare conditions 
as well as to obtain results that are tailor-made to individual patients. So say you conducted an N of 1 randomized control trial. What do you do with the results you have? Interpretation of trial results can encompass both statistical and clinical aspects. One category of statistical interpretation is visual inspection, which involves graphical display of outcome assessments over time and in relation to the treatment being received. Findings that would support a conclusion in favor of the intervention would be minimal variability within periods, large difference between active and placebo periods, and consistency of the magnitude of the difference between active and placebo periods. This allows conclusions to be intuitively drawn about the direction, magnitude, and consistency of response to experimental treatment before conducting formal analyses. An important consideration, however, is the subjectivity of this method, which yields the potential for inconsistency and or bias in the evaluation of the effects of an intervention. Statistical tests of significance are similar to those generally used in conventional RCTs, starting with a hypothesis that intervention treatment has no significant effect. Analyses can include obtaining a p-value for the direction of the observed treatment difference, the wilcoxon signed rank test, and analysis of variance using the ANOVA method. Clinical interpretation of results focuses on health-related quality of life measurements. In an N of 1 RCT designed to examine the efficacy of a specific intervention in ameliorating symptoms due to a specific condition, a primary outcome measure is health-related quality of life. In such a case, an important tool is a questionnaire measuring the severity of symptoms identified by a patient as related to his or her disease and important in day-to-day -day life. Terminology used then is the minimal important difference, which is the smallest difference that is sufficiently significant so as to warrant modification in a patient's management. As with conventional trials, ethical considerations must be fulfilled. Patients should be fully informed of the nature of the study in which they are participating, and there should be no element of deception in the use of placebos. Also, written informed consent and IRB approval must be obtained. Experience has found that the N of 1 method can aid in the resolution of difficult clinical dilemmas with changes in treatment and decisions on long-term follow-up having been undergone based on the results of N of 1 trials. The most rigorous test of usefulness of this design would be a randomized control trial of N of 1 randomized control trials. In fact, Three such RCTs have actually been conducted, involving randomization into either conventional care or an N of 1 RCT. Two of the three assessed the use of theophylline in patients with chronic airflow limitations. The N of 1 RCTs did not affect quality of life or functional status. However, fewer patients in the N of 1 RCT groups ended up receiving the drug in the long term. So, N of 1 RCTs saved patients the expense, the inconvenience, and the potential toxicity of long-term theophylline therapy that was of no use to them. In the third RCT, all quality of life measures were in favor of the N of 1 arm, but the costs were also higher in that arm. So one can conclude that N of 1 RCTs are not uniformly superior to conventional trials, and thus, further studies are surely warranted. While N of 1 RCTs can be feasible, highly informative, and stimulating, full impl implementation of this method is unlikely to become a major part of clinical practice. Yet, some principles can be incorporated into clinical practice, such as repeated withdrawal and reintroduction of medication in an open and unmasked fashion. The N of 1 randomized control trial has the potential to improve the quality of medical care and the judicious use of expensive and potentially toxic medication in patients with chronic disease. Thank you so much for watching.
ICT save patients the expense, the inconvenience, and potential toxicity of long-term drug and therapy of no use to them. And third, RCT all quality of life.